Welcome to Tell Us What You Made, the show where we each make one dish with a common ingredient or theme, and then get together, discuss what we made, and see if we learned anything. In this episode, Inka, Sean, and I all made dishes using whole fish. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hello. Welcome to the first in-person filming of Tell Us What You Made. It's weird that we conform to the same framing, <laughs> even though <laughs> we're in person together. And the first video where Sean is on camera, Speaking. And not swearing. Sean is about to eat the wasabula. Oh, wow. <laughs> I chose whole fish because I feel like I don't cook enough whole fish. I wanted to force myself into making something new. Okay, Inka, tell us what you made. I made a steamed fish. This is a very Ooh. popular mm. sort of like Cantonese style steamed fish. Growing mm. up in Hong Kong, Fish, seafood is like a big part of our diet, big part of our culture. Very little ingredients, but very good. I actually haven't made it that often mm. because my family's very good at making it. Therefore, I never needed to make it. I picked up a sea bass from the seafood purveyor in Chinatown, second generation, called Aquabet. Stephen, who was the owner, I talked to him. I was going to go in and buy a different fish, but then he recommended actually the sea bass because he said, this is the fish you want for steaming. It's going to have more of like a fluffy, tender texture. His crew just like helped me kind of prep the fish a little bit, like scaling it and like getting the the guts out and all that, mm. which I was very intimidated by. Oh my God. Oh man. Oh my God. Yeah. Gory. The first thing I did when I went home was just to give it a good wash, you know, all the blood and just making sure all the scales are not there anymore. It's a nice looking fish. I know, it's, it's nice such looking a good fish. looking fish. But what we're seeing here is just slicing three incisions um, on the fish and then inserting a slice of ginger right in there. Mm. Also in the belly itself, more aromatics. In this case, I just put like a bunch of scallions and ginger, again, just to give it a little more flavor. And then because I don't have a proper steamer, the chopsticks are here because you don't want the fish to stick to the plate. You want it right. to have a little mm -hmm. bit more room and so then this, the fish can steam evenly. So this is like a little hack. Okay. So I put the pot and then the rack and, and then, then the, the, plate, and then the plate and, and then, then the chopsticks, chopsticks and then the <laughs> So it's, it's like a steamer, it's a steamer rack. Yes, okay, it's okay. a steamer yeah, yeah, yeah. rack. The fish is a little big though. It's a little too big for this pot. And then it was just steaming it super, super fast once you yeah. steam it. For this fish, it was around, I think like 11 minutes. You don't want to overcook it because once you overcook it, the fish becomes too rubbery. Right before the fish had finished steaming, I prepped like the oil on the sides because what we do in Cantonese cuisine is I'm basically heating up some hot oil, which we're going to finish the dish with. Just like pour oh, it on okay. it. Yes. So this trick is a little thing that my brother likes to do. Add flavor to the hot mm -hmm. oil while it's heating up. So that's why I'm adding in more scallions and ginger. There's a lot of ginger scallions in this recipe. And then so on the fish, I'm adding on some ginger and also some scallions. And then this soy sauce is very specific. Mm. In Chinese, it literally says soy sauce for steamed fish. And I actually like to pour it on the side rather than on the fish. And then here's where I just add on my oil. You hear that? Yeah. One more time, one more time. <laughs> this is like my favorite part. Yeah. This is a sound of um, joy. This is yeah. how I eat it at home with a bowl of rice. And let me tell you, this sauce, the soy sauce and the oil, yeah, you with the fish juice yeah. going into it. With the rice, yeah. I could eat like three bowls of rice just wow. with that. That's about it. This is my, my whole it's fish. Great. It looks That's so really impressive, good. but it seems like it was pretty easy to it's do. It's very easy to do. And even though I grew up with fish, it can be very intimidating to mm -hmm. cook with whole fish. This is, I think, a very approachable and very enjoyable dish to try. All right, so that was my fish. Sean, I believe you are up next. Yeah, I made fish stock. Fish stock, okay. Fish stock. Nice. Whenever you read recipes for stock, it's always like, here are 50 things you need to put in the pot together, yeah. or you need to have like frozen yeah. a year's worth of onions or something. So I actually went to the library and I found this recipe that required like six things. So it was really simple. So the first thing I did was I actually got a new toy. I bought this knife, it's called a deba. It's specifically for breaking down meat that has thin bones. And then I got a fish scaler. I went to my local market I bought this fish. This is a sea bream, also known as a madai in Japanese. It's also sometimes known as a snapper. It's really like thick, beautiful and scaly. It has kind of like an iridescent sort of glint to it. Like mm -hmm. as you move it, like it changes with the light. 
You ever hear about how uh, when they designed the Prius, that aerodynamic shape is based on a fish? Oh, really? You can really see that in that um. top down. So I broke down a Prius. I actually took a lesson on how to break down a whole fish. Oh. I learned from um, Chef Daniel Lee at Osaka Noya and Gangjin in Brooklyn, just walking us through this technique called San Mayoroshi, which is when you break down the fish into three parts. And so I wanted to like perfect that. This feels like a life skill that is really important. Like it just feels like something that I feel like I should just yeah. No, like yeah. as a human. One day you're gonna be at yeah. that dinner party and they're gonna be like, oh my God, does anybody know how to cut this fish open? And yeah. Be like, or like, everyone step aside. Dang. If the world ends and I need to like go fishing, or yeah. if I just go fishing, I guess is fine too. One thing that I, I will say about this process that I really enjoyed, when you do break down a whole fish, you're really faced with like, the life that the fish lived, I guess. Yeah, and yeah, so you yeah. sort of build a reverence for it. And uh, like, it really made me feel a little bit more responsible for like this body that I had. The scales are like going everywhere here. Yeah. <laughs> They're really beautiful. They look like cherry blossoms a little bit, but they were like, I'm still finding scales in my kitchen. <laughs> I bet. You remove the head, you remove the guts. And then what you do is you follow the bone as you're cutting through it. And that allows you to break it down into the main pieces. When you cut through fish, you're supposed to do it with like one cut, but I, it took me a little bit longer than that because I'm still learning. You cut it into two sides. Each side will give you a fillet and it'll give you a belly. So the fillet is separate from the belly. The fillet is separate from the belly. Okay. Yeah. So you'll have the belly sort of on the bottom, which is this long piece. And then you have the fillet, which is a little bit thicker. So you end up with these, these pieces um, that are really beautiful. How was it to use that knife? It was very fun. I think you could probably use any knife. It was maybe overkill for me to get a whole new knife for it, but it was definitely I, I will a never, good experience. I will never not advocate for getting a whole new knife. So are you saving these pieces for cooking? So I save the time? pieces yeah, for later, and then I, I use them over time. And then what you have to do is you have to break down the head. The head has a, a few different pieces there. The first thing you have to remove is the gills because those would make the stock go a little bit murky. Yeah, so they don't taste good, you, right? They don't yeah. taste good. Um, and you also don't want a lot of blood. Right. Mm. And so this is me struggling to remove the gills. This is really clumsy. And it's also me removing the collarbone, the co um, yeah. the comma. And then you'll end up with the bones and the tail and the head. I broke down the spine and the interior bones just to make it a little bit more manageable so that we can use it for broth. Sean, do you have the name of the book? Yes, the, name of the, the, the book is, <laughs> so I went to the central branch of the LA Public Library. The World Book of Fish Dishes by Nina Frode Ooh. Um, is from like the 60s or the 70s. Nice. From there, I got all of my aromatics. So I had like half an onion lying around in my kitchen. I had some garlic lying around. Like these are things that I could easily buy if I needed to. I did buy thyme. And then I had some, I bought some fresh parsley and then I made a little satchel, sachet that you would then use to put in the stock to yeah. give it like, to impart a lot of flavor. And to keep it together. And to keep it together. Mm -hmm. I did just randomly have cheesecloth around. I know that's not something that everybody just has lying around, but it, it was it was relatively you easy to You know what I do by. sometimes? You know the tea bags, the disposable mm -hmm. tea bags that you can buy? Yeah. I just use those. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. You take all of the remaining parts, soak them in water with salt. It'll draw out some of the blood, take out some of that like, Fishy. Fishiness mm. um, that I personally don't enjoy. I know some people do, but it does also allow you to have a clearer stock. And you can kind of throw anything in here in terms of vegetables. You throw in lemon, some wine, you simmer it, skimming lime, it, and then you, you end up with this really beautiful stock. I think I put a little bit too much wine in it and a little bit too much lemon, so it was a little bit acidic. So, anyway, I ended up with this beautiful stock um, that's a little bit cloudier than I think you want it to be, but mm. I liked it. Mm. And yeah. it was very, and I was able to save a lot of it. Um, I ended up with like three or four containers left over that I've yeah. been able to like share with friends. And then from there, because I wanted to see what it would taste like in a recipe, I made risotto. Nice. Which I've never made before. Ooh. Oh my God. I like decided to take <laughs> one of the Look one of that. the fillets and spice it up and then yeah. just boiled it. It oh. came out really flaky. It tasted wonderful. I feel like it's almost because you were worried about the acidity that in rice, it kind of balances it, was it back perfect. out, right? Yeah, it was perfect. Perfect. Yeah. It was great. I mean, oh th this is my first time making risotto. The texture wasn't quite right, mm -hmm. but it tasted, tasted great. I, I marinated the collards and miso and then broiled it. Um, and then I had just a bunch of like fish left. So I decided to make, make fish, fish and, and chips, chips, which I've never done before. Uh, finally, I had all this risotto left over. And then I also just had all this like frying oil left from the fish and chips. So I decided to try orangini. 
It's not really an arancini though because it, it's covered in tonkatsu sauce. But he basically wow. makes five dishes with one whole fish. This is a separate video. This I is a Sean I can't believe fish I have video. to go after this. It was a lot of fun. It was really fun. I really felt accountable to like mm. use every piece of it and and make sure that like it was it was used. All right, Andrew, tell us what you made. So I made little fish fried whole. I wanted to make this because my wife is Greek. We've traveled to Greece a lot. And this is like the quintessential summer meal is you'll have a spread of many things, but among them are whole fried fish. Mm. So here are my fish. What kind What kind of fish? fish are those? It could be any number of little fish. Sometimes it's anchovy or sardine or mullet. Mm. Uh, these are smelts. But I think the general category is sometimes called like white bait fish Ooh. because it's literally like the tiny little fish that you could just like mm. scoop up with a net and would then use as bait to catch other fish. So I just have a little handful of these smelts. You can they're see they're about the size of a finger. They're so smooth. So when it came to these fish, I was like, are, are they, am, I, am I just gonna fry these whole? What am I gonna do? And I, I ended up FaceTiming my mother-in-law and showing her these fish. And she was like, oh, those? Oh no, you should just pluck the head off Ooh. and that'll be the extent of what you need to do. And it took a second Whoa. to feel for it, but she was like, yeah, just behind the eyes, you just pinch and pull and it just, it pops right off. It's crazy. What, what, is that like the, the, the book? Yeah, that's, that's all of the innards. You know, it's such a small fish, there isn't a whole lot going on in there. I just had a pair of scissors where I just snipped a tiny portion of the belly and then just used my finger to clean it out. And then I rinsed them all under water to, to get everything out of that cavity. It was surprisingly easy and like pretty intuitive, honestly. I allowed them to dry pretty thoroughly and then I tossed them in flour, knocked off any excess flour, and then I went to fry them. And for this, I actually got this this is a carbon steel skillet, mm. but it's a deep one. And they call it a country fry pan. Is nice. it that pot? It is that pot up there. Yeah. <laughs> Should I bring I, it down? I was like, I recognize that pot when I walked in. This is a good pot, yeah. I'm wow. holding it on camera like this. And this is something that I've been looking for, honestly, which is a pot that's deep enough where it's not gonna splatter too much yeah, everywhere, yeah, yeah. but it's also heavy enough oh, wow. so that it's gonna retain a lot of that heat and not lose too much temperature when you drop things in for frying. It's also a really good size because you don't have to like fill a whole Dutch oven with oil. Exactly, so, you don't have to yeah. use too much oil. This is grapeseed oil, and then I put the smelts in and wait for them to get a little bit golden. Using your tongs. I think I actually overdid it slightly, to be mm -hmm. honest. I think I could have fried them less, but I was looking for that golden color mm -hmm. But honestly, I would have just kept them a little bit more pale and tender. Mm. And then seasoning only once they're out of the oil. Ooh. With a slice of lemon on the side, just whole fish. And because they're so small, the bones are basically like non-existent. Like when you take a bite, you don't even notice them. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you look inside the fish, you'll see little brittle bones. But in the course of eating it, it's, it's, it's nothing. The outside has more texture than the inside. And so this is usually part of like, you know, a meal where you're eating lots of little things. So I wanted to make what is kind of like the quintessential trifecta for me, which is some fried potatoes. I did it in my oven because I didn't want to fry something else. Mm. I did that with a side of tzatziki. So here I'm grating cucumber, adding it, mixing it all up. Wow. 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 Olive oil. Wow. A Greek salad is always oh. the like third component yeah. for me. And so just kind of like bouncing around between some nice hot potatoes, creamy yogurt, nice acidic salad, herby, and then you just have a bite of fish. And you just eat a whole fish in one bite, and that's great. That's really good. Amazing. Thanks. So that was our whole fish episode. We had Inca's steamed fish, Sean's fish stock, plus everything else with a sea brain and my whole fried smelts. Whole fish is never the ingredient that we cook a lot with, so I mm -hmm. feel like this has mm -hmm. allowed us to explore a lot of different things we wouldn't have tried otherwise, so mm. it's only the beginning. Well, if you have any ways that you really like cooking whole fish, please let us know, but otherwise, thanks for watching. Bye. You're not keeping this. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>